しいこんにちは、Punks in Pubs Podcast。My name is Liam Bird, and I hope you are all well. Thank you to everyone who came back and listened to the last podcast, episode 43, with me and Zach、uh, from Pears, because I was a little fearful. We've been away for、uh, about two months, and I kind of guessed that you might have all forgotten about us, but that's not the case. We've seemed to have picked up a couple of more people on this joyful journey of punk rock podcastery. I've just made that up.、Uh, so, yeah. Thank you. Carry on though, spreading the podcast love. Word of mouth is such a powerful thing. So please tell your friends, tell your family, ping a link on a WhatsApp chat group, one of the hundreds that we're in that we kind of mute because everyone's a bit boring. And then we jump in about 50 texts in and go, oh, I'm not going to read all that. So you ask someone to kind of summarize what's going on. And then everyone hates you.、Uh, that's my WhatsApp world. So yeah, ping a link on that and、uh, let's keep the podcast growing. Last episode, I announced that Punks in Pubs want you as a sponsor for the podcast. If you're in a band or you own your own label or creating a zine or website or printing t shirts or selling fucking beer, as long as it's got something to do with the punk rock community, then I want you to sponsor the podcast. It will be completely free. I'm not asking you to pay for anything. All I want to do is give back to the punk rock community after you've given me so much、uh, with this podcast, as well as part funding me getting across Europe to go to punk rock holiday so I can bring you some great interviews. Like today's episode. That's a fucking segue, people.、Uh, so, this is the first of one of those interviews that I did at Punk Rock Holiday. <laughs> So, episode 34 sees me having a good old chinwag with a very delightful Seema, lead vocalist of the Israeli punk act Not on Tour. So, first thing I want to say about this interview is that Frank Turner owes me and Seema an apology because he is loud as fuck.、Um, Frank gets very passionate in his interviews, so、um, he kind of projects quite well. And you hear him having、uh, an interview in the, back,、uh, in the background for about the first 15 minutes of my chat with Seema. So, yeah, you're going to hear Frank. Frank Bellow from time to time. And also, where we were situated, well, where the interview room is situated at Punk Rock Holiday, there is a little gangway where about bands are loading and unloading their equipment or going to their、um, hotel rooms, which they have at Punk Rock Holiday. They've got some rooms. So occasionally you'll hear some banging and clanging because the room that we're in, the noise echoes. It's a very hard room, the interview room.、Uh, it's not really made for podcasts. So apologies in advance. Your ears will adapt. But yeah. What can we do? I mean, this is a punk rock podcast. If you can't fucking deal with a little bit of clanging every so often,、uh, you need to kind of reevaluate yourself. Anyway, so what do me and Seema talk about? Well, we discovered that me and Seema kind of have the same upbringing in the case of that we both loved radio growing up and we both used to pretend to be radio DJs as kids. We discuss our families who tried to help us be creative but were just really, really shit at it. So, yeah, we, we kind of bond over that. Seema reminisces about school and finding her punk rock crowd. From there, we discuss the DIY punk scene of Israel and how the military service in Israel,、uh, where we actually go and join the Israeli Defense Force, I think it's like for two years for girls and three years for men, has played its part in stifling、uh, music creativity in the country. Lastly, Seema explains how u s e s ID. Paved the way for Israeli bands to go and tour the world, and we finish up discussing Seema's jump into stand up comedy. I'll be back at the end of this chat with a swift roundup, but that's then and this is now. This is episode 44 of Punks in Pubs with myself and Seema at Punk Rock Holiday. Enjoy. <laughs>
so we are at Punk Rock Holiday. Uh, we are in the um, press area, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> to the right of us is Frank Turner having a very in-depth conversation, yes. but we're not talking to Frank. <laughs> we are talking to Seema from uh, Not On Tour. How are you? Hi. I'm um, great. I'm, I'm a bit quite, tired, but I'm, I'm good. <laughs> you you were playing quite late, about 10 o'clock yes. last night. and 10, then 10.50? No, 10, 10, 9.50, yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry. When I was obviously researching uh, for you, I discovered that you are a woman of many talents. Uh, so yes, you are uh, acting, rapping, stand-up <laughs> comedian. Oh, God, uh, you really... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We researched it. We, the res- web, yeah. we researched this shit. <laughs> so have you always been a performer? Like, since you was a child, have you, have you one of those children who was like, Mommy, Daddy, look at me? No, I wasn't. I mean, I was, but not Mommy, Daddy, look at me. Okay. I was... I just loved singing. Yeah. I was singing since fourth grade, and I was in the choir okay. of school, and we were going to like, we were singing with this high-pitched voice that yeah. I had, like, <laughs> and um, that's when I when I realized, okay, I love I love music, and I was yeah. singing um, at home and everywhere, and about I was never like kind of um, looking for attention kind of girl, yeah. you know what I mean? But I, I knew that I was kind of, uh, that I needed a stage, you know? And then I started learning theater, studying theater at school, and um, I knew that this is what I want to do. Yeah. yeah. So when you were a kid uh, in a choir... <laughs> <laughs> Sounds so weird. <laughs> hey, kids, what kids the fuck happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> so when you were a kid in the choir, yes. were you competing with other kids? Like, did you have no, that competitiveness? No. no, no. It was just in the like background. After hours. No, I got I got solos because I was good. I guess <laughs> I was hitting notes. Mm-hmm. You know, it was very friendly. It was me and my friends, and the guy running the choir was like a really sweet, funny guy, and he was writing the songs on his own. Oh, really? Songs about like chickens and <laughs> cows. <laughs> <laughs> really those well, those well-known beavers. choir songs about chicken and cows. Yes, yeah, yeah. you know yeah, the yeah. normal life of, yeah, yeah. of a fourth-grade-year-old. <laughs> 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 I don't know. That was my life back then. I guess it's weird. Uh, but, I like um, the idea of you really putting some effort into the cows go moo and the yeah, chickens yeah, go yeah. cluck cluck. Yeah, yeah. It, it was really nice, sweet songs, funny, hmm. but very melodic, and we did harmonies and stuff. Like we loved it it was like after hours you know it was not part of the school um, curriculum yeah so um, so no no it's so did your family embrace that then did they realize yes. that you were this this creative young lady who was wanted yeah. to perform yeah actually they did hmm. they did um, they a lot of things they did wrong <laughs> not <laughs> really not because it mom and dad you fucked me up and I'm and not dad. happy about it <laughs> no it's just th- th- they didn't know some things mm. you know what mm. I mean some parents they don't have so much to offer sometimes they yeah. did their best yeah they think they're they doing something good and yeah then and they didn't that. know so well what to do I mean they had a rough life yeah but in all of that I always knew that they were supporting my passion mm. they were always telling me like oh that's amazing and they were like bragging about me to their fam- to my family the, to Aww. the rest of the family yeah. so they I knew that this was something that they were supporting me with yeah and that is something that I have to follow because otherwise I, won't, I would be unhappy hmm. yeah. so w- when you say that they were supportive I, I'm reading between the lines here because mm-hmm. y- y- your background might be a little bit like mine whereabouts my, my family were had no idea about <laughs> like creativity creativity was just nothing in their yeah. life yeah. and they didn't have any financial backing to support me yeah. in to send me to go to school where so I can learn this kind of stuff and, and expand what I believe I wanted to do creative, yeah, creatively yeah, or yeah. artistically but what they what they kind of <laughs> did was they I can remember they bought me this really shitty and it's it's not their fault it was this really shit <laughs> it was a really shitty play and uh, pause uh, tape deck and if you press play and pause it recorded yes and I had that and I used to pretend to be on the radio oh my god I did the same did you I did the same you remind me now yeah I was with my best friend at the time we were at my room in mm-hmm. my room. When we were like, I don't know, sixth, seventh grade, maybe more, no, fifth grade. And we were using like used cassette cassette tapes. Yeah. 
or we would buy one, you know, like new one, and just make like we would have made up radio shows yeah. on those cassettes. Yeah. We would love that. Oh my god! And I used Crazy. to. And I used to. Um, <laughs> and look at you now. I know. Look at me now. Machines. I've got a machine and two mics. <laughs> Mommy, look at me <laughs> now. <laughs> look at me now, mom. <laughs> I've got. I've got two crappy mics and a, and a recorder, <laughs> and we've got a shitty podcast. Yes. Let's crack on. Nice. <laughs> yeah, you reminded good. me of that now. Good um, memory. Did you ever used to record off the radio as well doing that? To what? Did you know, record off the radio. You know, before yes, there was Spotify. Yes, I <laughs> yeah. did. I yeah. did. I, I loved that. Yes. I, I was always scared that someone's going to come knock on my door and tell me that I need to pay for the money. Really? Mm. No, I never had that. I was, I don't know. No. I never thought of that. <laughs> I had deep issues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so but they also had... Okay, go on. No, 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 no go on. No, tell me, tell me, tell me. Tell me I on. had a, a rock set... Cassette, rock set, oh, oh, the so band. Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, do you know them? No. <laughs> really? <laughs> no. Oh, my God. They're a like, rock, pop kind of band with a yeah. li- like a lady singer. Rock set, I don't know. Rock set. It, they're, they were huge at the time, and I was like, I was going out of my mind listening to them. Like, yeah. Like, jumping off and uh, jumping on my parents' bed. Just like back and forth from A to B. And on a, a hairbrush? Did you just have a hairbrush? Like use yes, a I did. Yeah, yeah. I have everything. Yeah, it was all there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what, what kind of music radio is played in Israel, is like played out. I'm presuming it's kind of like a lot of the Middle East where it's a lot of hip hop, a lot of rap. Um, also, yeah. So, so is that something that was like your first love rather than punk or hardcore? Like, was it rap? Uh, no, I guess... It was like rock and roll in yeah. a way. I think my mom would always sing like Beatles hmm. songs to me. And she would like, she would teach me. I remember she one day she taught me how to dance rock and roll because that was, that's what they used to do back then. Yeah. If this wasn't radio, I would ask you to completely dance yes, rock and roll. Yes, I would totally do that. <laughs> no, but it was really sweet. I remember the dance moves. It's really easy, hmm. you know. But kind of rock and roll and... Also hip hop very early because um, there was a lot like stuff on MTV back then yeah. that I liked like many like female artists um, and also like No Doubt I remember I loved them stuff that are like kind of because I see like for me hip hop and punk rock hmm. they combine they combine like similar features I think massively you know? yeah, yeah. I, I think so. And so I never saw myself as like, oh, I was first this and then that. But first of all, I went to like hip, uh, punk rock shows, definitely. Yeah. And then I started like finding more people who's like, um, who rap and like go to hip hop shows and stuff. And now I, I have the place that I can, like people and places that I go to. Mm. But punk rock has been like um, definitely where I grew up you yeah. know yeah. so do you remember your first show then like going to your first yes, punk show what was, that, what was that experience like I was then? like 13 and a half or something oh you were young uh, yeah I yeah, was yeah, yeah. and we were um, me and my friend and kind of boyfriend at the time like kind of he was asking me like do you want to be my girlfriend on the phone yeah. you know <laughs> I was like I have to think about it <laughs> you know and I don't know the guy but but we liked each other yeah it was yeah, sweet yeah. it was sweet yeah <laughs> and um, there was a show at this um, DIY kind of um, venue small place and there was three bands like Israeli bands playing mm-hmm. one was called Pancake Punk Cake Punk cake. <laughs> like pan, yeah. yeah. Um, Love a good pun. Yes, yeah. the pun, yeah. The pun in the cake. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you let me have that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> which I loved at the time. I was like in love with that band. They're yeah. s- they were so good. And I was going with like my friend at the time. She she was like, um, I was like, you should come with me. There's this band. We should go watch that show. And she um, she came with me. But she wasn't, like, falling for that <laughs> like I did. I was like, ah, it's good, right? And she was like, yeah, it's fine. I'm like, it's okay. She didn't follow through with coming, like... Didn't go to the other end. Yeah, like, yeah. Did, <laughs> so did you go straight into, like, the pit? Did they no, no, no. I was, like, scared. Like, yeah. um, But it was more, like, pop punk. 
okay, kind of yeah. feel. So it was kind of more um, gentle. Hmm. Mosh pit, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you had your own space to yeah. kind of move around. Could, yeah. do, do you I was also getting, you know, the f I didn't know what was what I was looking for. You know, yeah. I just knew that I liked the music. And then I was at the show, like, who are those people? What is that? I, I loved it. Yeah. Cause you, you said DIY, and um, about four years ago, I did a documentary for the BBC called uh, Hip Hop in the Middle East. And we went to... Oh, really? Hello. Yeah. Why? I think I, maybe I saw that. You would have, you would have heard it. It was a, it was on the radio, but I didn't do oh, it. On the radio, yeah, yeah, okay. Because yeah. there's um sorry, there was a documentary like video so about hip hop in the, in the Middle it's, East. It's, yeah, so my one was um for BBC Radio Four and BBC World Service, and mm -hmm. and it was with um oh I forgot the guy's name now. He does a lot of filming. Uh, he's from Lebanon. So we went to Beirut, and nice. then we went to Jordan, and we spoke to this guy from Syria. Uh, uh, this has got nothing to do with my question at all. But <laughs> <laughs> it's just interesting yeah, to me. Yeah. Um, wow. So, so yeah, so we did that documentary, and we were in... So in all those areas, I uh, went to Cairo as well. And I, just because I'm a big punk fan, I was like, I want to see what, what's going on with the punk scene, like yeah. if there is a punk scene. And there was. It's, it's very DIY, very, very underground. Like yeah. literally in someone's... One night was in someone's bedroom, and I was like, this wow. is... This is fucking weird, but it was a yeah. good. It was like a good laugh. Um, I don't, and I am being very generalization with the whole of the Middle East and throwing yeah, yeah. in Israel into that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but the punk scene was it like that? Was it very much like in people's garages or no. people's no? Um, I mean yes, but no. Okay, Cause, cool. Um, it's a bit different than I think the Arab countries around us. Mm -hmm. Maybe I don't know now, but I think Lebanon is pretty. Like they have some bands over there in our country. Um, it was DIY. Like there were, there was more happening back when we were younger. Um, we would go to like scouts. Um, how do you call it? like um, like a site for scouts? You yeah, know how yeah. You call that? I don't yeah, know. So the base base for scouts. Like in the daytime, like in the night, we would do the shows there. Yeah. And um, basements and some people's houses. Yeah, like backyards or. Yeah, I guess it's not like if I think of like the government in maybe I don't know. I actually don't know how it is comparing to other other yeah. places. So 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 um, in Israel, but I think it's very Americanized yeah. in Israel, and we had like TV, we had everything, we had like kind of access to a lot of things. Yeah. So we could do it kind of properly, but there was a lot of DIY. Like, and also you couldn't. There's no YouTube or anything. You know that. So. Mm you would have to like look things up and like mouth to, you know mouth to ear yeah. Them, yeah and flyers and everything and it was more DIY than now in general um, it so was shittier than I remember <laughs> 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 to be honest <laughs> shitty sound uh, shitty. no but but, but it was a good spirit I, I liked say, it at those times I'm sure it was like amazing especially because you, when you were saying like at Scout like rooms it would be like something like this yeah just and like but created you, like there was no stage you yeah. know and, and you got these shitty amps which you'll bust out <laughs> because someone <laughs> decided to crank it up a little bit more and all of a sudden yeah. the speakers are fucked and then it burns halfway yeah. through then four other bands can't play yeah so there's one person who had to share the guitar and they've only got two <laughs> yes. strings left so they're <laughs> yes. still trying to play that music yes it was shittier than we remember i guess hey shitty punk is the best shitty punk. punk shitty <laughs> punk is the best punk what do you play shitty punk shitty punk <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely a genre somewhere <laughs>
these bands going to DIY shows. Do you think that you that your creativity was strife, strife so by not being able to see some of the bigger acts because a lot of acts will for political reasons not come to Israel. Do you think that kind of hindered your creativity because you won't be able to see No Doubt or I don't know if No yeah, Doubt yeah. play or No, they they didn't. I mean some some bands would come. Yeah. I think I haven't seen them but Shelter came back then. Um, some bands, good, 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 clean fun. Yeah. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, but I didn't even know about them because I was really, really young. I was like ten, yeah. so I, I didn't know. Th- but still, it's very hard to. Still, it's very hard to get bands to come to Israel. I mean, not as hard, but um, if they're in Europe, it's easier. But they wouldn't just come to Israel. You but know? do you think that? But it's it's um, it made us in the, in the scene. The thing is, we we w- were growing up watching like Useless ID. Yeah. So we were like, ah, oh, we want to be like them, you know, like, and we loved what they do. We, st- we still do, you know. Yeah. And um, I think living in Israel and knowing what's out there, you have to get out. You have to get yourself out of the, your like your comfort zone mm. and go somewhere. And I think it, it made um, the scene, it was not competitive, but it was very supportive of each other. And also very, um, how do you say that? Shit, I'm, I'm uh, do like uh, you want to work hard. You know what I mean? Yeah. You want to earn that. You want to get out there. You know because it's not so easy. It's but not easy. So in true punk rock fashion, though, if like a band like yourself who do travel internationally, mm-hmm. when you go back, do you get a lot of people like thinking, "Oh, they're too big for their boots." Like they, they, they think they're better than the rest of us who are stuck around uh, and not left. <laughs> so we get sometimes comments. Yeah. But it's like. One out of a billion. Everybody's really, really supportive. So nice, and it's actually you feel it when you're home and you're like you, you do shows in Israel. It's a different feeling, you know. Hmm. Um, everywhere is different, you know. But you feel like if we wouldn't have that, then it would be a shame. I, I don't know. We try to. We, we always try to like have fun with what we do and respect like all our fans. Doesn't matter if they're from Israel or from you know wherever, yeah. you know. So I think people see that and they enjoy our music and we feel a lot of love back, you know, yeah. from from the people back home. Sometimes one guy could say, like, oh, I don't know. Every, every, everyone's got that moment. Yeah, everyone yeah, everyone's, gets a comment yeah. every now and then. But you can't, you know, let that make you feel unwanted or, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you decide that you wanted to, like, have a have a go at being in a band like before not on tour was there other bands that you were messing around with yes. giving it a go and mm-hmm. there's another band when i was 14 we started a band with my boyfriend at the time yeah the one he's actually <laughs> the one, one is yeah. not your boyfriend but he's your boyfriend yeah <laughs> yes. um he's actually he's drumming for you this id today really? yeah he's oh. the drummer. <laughs> yes so we're like in this together, you yeah. know what I mean? Like he has, he has um, a girlfriend. For I was like gonna say, seven, is, is, is he about to come and go? Are we still going out? What's going are on? Are we like, together yeah, right we now? Together? Or what, what's going on? We never us? really made it clear. <laughs> yes. What's no, no, on? we were together yeah, for right. five years, but we were like going to shows together. It was really, really sweet and romantic at the time, mm. you know. And we, we are good friends, you know. What did I? What did, was the? Uh, we were talking about bands Shit. before. Ah, yeah. yeah. So we had this band. It's called Phony Pony. Oh my god! I don't even know where to start were you, with. Were this. you a ska band? I'm, it sounds I'm like no, a ska band. No, but it was it was good actually. It was good. We yeah. had one album. Is it out there? Can people find it? Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> it's very slow. It's like, you know, like. Don't worry. Very, I, I will now look cut it up, this. Please. This, this, <laughs> this a, is a where you can by, check yeah, out Phony Pony. A, a, tr- a track by uh, oh, Phony no. Pony will come in at this point in time in oh the podcast when I'm editing. Yes, so. um, but I'm actually very proud of. You're proud songs of I everything wrote. you do. Yes. You should always this be proud of everything started, you do. Yeah. You know, we were 14, and we were actually practicing in our bass player's house, like basement. And it was super cool. And then we started having shows, and I, I was so, like, embarrassed. Kind of like, I don't know. I didn't know what to do with myself on mm. stage. I was, like, singing, but I was, like, kind of shy. And... And this is where I was like, okay, I need to do this. I, I'm i doing it, you know. And then we kind of stopped playing. Nothing wrong, just, you know, we were like 18, finishing school and like everything kind of like, okay, 
we left it behind. We started. I started not on tour, and we started other things. Mm. So it's quite. Then. <laughs> it's quite interesting. You said like when you, when you started being that person who's at the front of the stage. Yeah. And you don't really know what to do with your body. Mm-hmm. At what point did you go? Just ah, and just started, like, just <laughs> pacing the stage. Because I saw myself in in videos. I'm like, oh my god, what is happening? Yeah. <laughs> and also, people. I was like asking people, how how is it like? Like you should be more open. Like just be yourself. You know, don't be scared. You know. Because I was really shy and kind of scared, more um, timid, you know, of like, mm. oh, what do I do? Like, I know how to sing, but what else do I do here? What do I talk about? Because I would watch shows. I would be like, oh, people talk about this and that. Like, nobody told me how to do a show. Because you have the microphone, so people expect you to talk. And, like, and then I would start. One time, I was actually looking at poems. I remember that. Were you going to perform and then perform a poem? Yes, I would do it. I did a show and then I did a song and I'm like, so I read this thing and it's beautiful. Let me read it to you. <laughs> you remind me of stuff. This is a very good interview. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Like, so let me, um, let me read this to you from my hand. Blah, 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 blah. And blah, blah, blah. And everybody was like, Okay. This is nice. <laughs> Play a fucking song. Play a fucking song now, please. <laughs> so I'm like, let's not do this again where I read poems. <laughs> I don't know. Who am I? No, but um, but I'm like, I I need to enjoy that. Mm. I need to enjoy that and like be like open because that's, that's who I am. I need to be like what I am on stage who's who I am off stage. You know, I'm not playing a character or anything. I mean, maybe it's more um, out there, you know, yeah. when you're on stage, you're kind of... Um, making it bigger hmm. for something for for to get further in the crowd you know what I mean yeah 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 but other than that I want to be myself and that's what when you grow up you get more confident and like what am I saying what do I want to say and you get feedbacks yeah. from people who care and you're like they're like just be yourself it's fine like don't worry about it you know I'm guessing also and as the band gets bigger you realize actually you've got this megaphone where people are listening to you. So if you have something to say, yeah, say it. Use that, use yeah. that space. Yeah, because they're all staring at you. Yeah, not the other way around. So yeah, and I've had like my good friends always coming to the show and dancing around and like really supporting. Hmm. So I was having like my back kind of. Um, they were having my back. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. And um, and I felt good about it. So it made me better you have to you have to feel supported to in order to push forward you know definitely definitely Um, because last night i did notice that you spoke about your government (laughs) i did (laughs) (laughs) and i don't know if you feel comfortable talking about your government ah it's okay Okay, i mean i'm not active i'm not like so i'm not politically active yeah so i'm always like i feel like weird in a way but i i live there yeah so i it's it's part of my life even if I, w- I would choose differently for how the country is being run you know yeah. but what can you do yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's very difficult because yeah. we come from that place we didn't choose that hmm. um, do you find that on tour a lot as well like because people automatically there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a huge issue in the UK at the moment with anti anti anti-Semitic in the UK it's very much people seem to be criticising um, the people of the country, not the Instead government of the, of the country. Government, yeah. yeah. Do you this get is, that? Do, yeah. you, do you get that when you are touring, where people try and talk yeah. politics to Actually, you? Actually, from the UK, we get. We, I think we've got the most, like, questions about it. Mm. Like, did you serve the army? Did you do this? Because I'm, I'm looking at your show. I might come, and we're like, if you want to ask us like questions about our lives, it's fine. Come to the show. I will talk to you. But, like, just assuming. First of all. Uh, just assuming things and like like kind of provoking is a diff- is a different thing and I don't want to condone that cuz I don't go and ask like american bands what they did in their lives you know mm. or what their fathers did what their a- ancestors did cuz mostly it's not a nice thing yeah, right don't, a- don't ask me we we british we, we yes, did a lot of bad everything. things you did yeah. everything in our country did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the the british um, it's not you. That's what I mean. Yeah. We are here. It's mm. fine. I didn't do. I, I actually like m- most of the band didn't serve the army. 
I didn't go, you know, so... Just so people understand that there's there's national service in Israel. Yeah, just it's, in it's, case it's uh, know. Yeah, yeah, sorry, it's uh, mandatory. Mm. So some people just go and they're like, ah, you know, what do I do? They don't even know they have the choice to don't to not go. Yeah. It's it's a hard it's a hard thing to do back then. Like now it's easier, I guess. But back then it was not so easy. Uh, it was like we were kind of um, how do you say that outcasts mm. by not going to the army. Like we we're like um, be- like tr- betraying. Like why? Like why don't you want to defend your country? And we're like, I want to like defend my family mm. and my friends. Okay, but I don't have an enemy, personally, and I don't want to fight someone else's fights. Mm. If they want to pick up guns, it's their job, you know. And um, and also the we know that by now that the the war is not about people. So. And I'm not gaining any money or land off of it, so why would I fight? You yeah, know, it's yeah. not my fight. Hmm. And this is where punk has been like a very um, good substitute for this kind of thought and um, for those ideas. You know. Do you think that there has been a limit though from from bands kind of progressing because people who usually start a band are around that age of like sixteen, seventeen, eighteen? Yeah. And. They, 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 they get into a band and all of a sudden they, they get called up and they go and serve for, yeah. for the army or whatever they're serving yeah. for. Yeah, so yeah. You, do you think that has then stopped the progression of Israeli bands, not just punk bands, but any form of band kind of yes, progressing and growing? Yes, it does. It does. Yeah. I know that about people like in my uh, school, like in my high school, that they were like, they were like, they loved playing guitar, loved, you know, playing music. Mm. And then they were like, oh, but I have to go to the army, so I'm not going to be able to do this for three years now unless I'm on, like, a week vacation. Then what do I do? I form a band. and So a lot of them stopped. Hmm. Or, like, you just follow whatever they tell you, and that's what punk is the opposite about, you know? Yeah. Like, And this is where I'm happy that I had this, like, I had, like, a bunch of friends that I found during high school when I went to these shows and they were like don't go to the army don't do that because <laughs> I didn't know I was like I have to go right mm. you know you're stupid you're, you're, you're 14 what do you know and then these ideas go in your head and you listen to these bands like punk bands telling you like yeah fuck, fuck wars fuck this fuck the government I mean and, and then you're like wait do I really have to go because all my friends are not going I don't believe in that that's not mine and I think that's um, that's something that happens a lot in when during like teenage years in Israel, especially yeah. when when people come into the punk scene. Not all of them; some of them come after, you know. But they come at the rebellious time, you know, mm. like teenage years, where they're like, "What do I do with my? Who am I? You know, what do I believe in?" And punk, the the punk scene has a lot to offer in that. I think. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I, besides drugs and. I mean, it's Self all part abused, of the package. It's yes. all part of the package. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I must say, yeah. I, I'm, I'm actually being quite good. I'm drinking water and uh, <laughs> don't have any drugs in front of me. No, no, no. It's no. only water. Yeah. And, yeah. Just, just that line of cocaine that's right in that corner there. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm joking. There's not. There's not. Back um, in the choir, we used to do. <laughs> <laughs> we used to do a lot of cocaine. Yeah. The teacher would make us. Yeah. Crack it's rough pipes. times, you know. We had no. to wait, be, wake up at seven a.m. Study. Shit needs to get done. You've yeah. got, you've got, you've got your books. You've got your. You've got and then your you got to put your vest on, and start singing with your hands like together. You know, like, like they're together fucking, like that. Just you got a little. It was line, so sweet. Little bump going. <laughs> <Yeah. on. laughs> Let's start talking about drugs. There's a man with a camera. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So you spoke about users ID. How important are they for not on tour to see how they've gone about touring and and kind of oh my god they were like our idols back then yeah yeah we love them and they're such good friends to us and like such an inspiration for many years Hmm. because they've done the impossible they went to the states lived there played in like places we we never like we never knew you could go there and like play shows and um are they still signed to fat Yes. They yeah, are, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, we were like inspired by them, mm. very. Um, and then we became friends with them. It was so like, oh, that's so nice. Like, they're such awesome people. And I think they kind of 
uh, based the punk rock scene for many years in Israel. After all this, say I need a psychiatrist, smash my head in my fist, kick down the door and piss on the floor. from touring these festivals and then because I don't know I'm guessing most yep. of you might have a lot of jobs away from this so how do you kind of make that jump like because uh -huh. it, it must just be talking about it oh, okay. in a way in yeah. a way I don't know if I, if I understand it correctly um, we want to go to other places that we haven't been to yet because uh, in Europe we've been coming here a lot and we love it mm. and I don't think there's a better place <laughs> to be honest no uh, um, but we want to go actually we want to go to the states because mm. I, we know how hard it is and but people keep telling us come blah blah you should go there you should go with like american bands and also canada we want to go you want to see the world and like play shows you know and just enjoy what we do you know it's yeah. not for like the money or anything otherwise we would be doing I'm different, just saying, just <laughs> different, totally different life yeah thing. so i think we just want to go australia we want to go to other places who, which are probably far mm -hmm. for us you know try and see what we find there and like grow with that you know that's I think kind of our goal in a way I don't know it's exciting yeah cause it, to it, like break your own um, threshold is that the right word you ki kind of I think I don't know like, I feel like I just put that word grow in your into mouth this <laughs> <laughs> like grow in a way mm. that is like natural but also to find more places more people Maybe a label in the States. Are you good for time? I, I'm, I'm very aware I'm taking up your time. Uh, it's uh, ah. five past five at the moment. I, I need to go in like five minutes. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, cool. yeah. So we're, we're okay. So let's quickly talk about then about but, your... But this is an amazing interview. Oh, thank you. It's very kind of you. Do you know that? That you're good? I, I don't like to brag. <laughs> <laughs> you are very good. <laughs> thank you. Um, Mommy, he's very good. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, that probably the most British I've ever been in my life. Where I just turned into like a, a bumbling Hugh Grant. Of like, <laughs> <laughs> right. So I, I legitimately want to talk about like your, you doing stand-up. Because I'm, oh I'm a huge stand-up fan. Like, Me too. I, I, I could watch it forever. Okay, so who, I die. who are you listening to? Who, who oh are you my watching God. at the moment? Okay, okay, okay. So back the back in the day of Louis C.K., like when he was like, okay, that was no, like, no, no. I used, yeah, broke my fucking mm. brain, you know. I was like, who's this guy? Am I like, cracking up? And also Bill Burr. Yeah. Oh God. Bill Burr is hilarious. He's like, oh my God, is he sexist right now? But he's super funny. I don't know what to do. <laughs> 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 he has this like thin line of like, okay, he's being very sexist right now, but it's super funny, so I'm just, just gonna laugh. <laughs> so is it more the American comedians then that you really, really yeah, yeah. yeah yeah and also what's his name from The Office Ricky Gervais yeah Ricky Gervais yeah. I love everything like that he does like mm -hmm. the mostly like his, his shows like I don't know uh, uh, Derek he had this Derek, do you know this yeah, one I know Derek yeah so like I love dark humor <laughs> that's fucking dark very yeah. dark yeah. very dark and um, there was this um, female Ali Wong, do you know her? Yes, I know Ali Wong. Yeah, so um, uh, I think I watched her special on Netflix. Recently. Yes, she was pregnant. Yes. She's talking shit about everything. Yeah. Like, she's super funny. Yeah, and she writes for some um, 
some shows. I don't remember which one right now. Those are like my, uh, okay. So, okay, here's, yeah. a, here's, a, here's a question that you might find awkward, but let's see how you go with it. If Louis C.K. was doing a show near you, would you go and watch him now? Because um, me and my friend had this conversation, shit. and I'll, I'll go first. I, prob- I would. Okay. I okay. would. I would. I probably would. Because like, the shit he's done is horrendous. Yeah. And awful. What? Yeah. So there's no. There's, I. But I'm not there's one no, for yeah. completely. That guy's career should not be ruined because he's fucked up massively, and I'm not defending him. He like he is. He needs yeah. to apologize, and he needs to like face what he's done because that doesn't sound like he has. But I think he did. Did he? I don't know. I don't know. I've, I've I heard was stuff just like, like, what the like, fuck, man? Because <laughs> I watched uh, Aziz Ansari's new stand-up special uh-huh. on is Netflix. It's it pretty good. Yeah. It's filmed Ooh. stupidly. <laughs> like, it's it, uh, Spike, Spike Lee, Spike Jones. Oh. No, Spike Jones films it. And Why? it's like he's filming a skate video. And it's like, mate, you're not. It's just, just fix camera. Just that's all I need. Relax. Yeah. Just put it. So many cuts. It's like oh, everywhere. God. And then sometimes he's mumbling really quietly. And you can't hear what he's saying. Oh, it's no. like fucking just do your show yeah but he kind of starts a show and he kind of fronts it straight away and he talks about how he's learned how he's progressed and all that sort of stuff and he might be bullshitting he might be telling the truth I don't know the guy so I'm not going to judge him but for me I, I heard it's quite sincere well I don't think Louis's done that Yeah, I don't think he's faced up to it but saying that I've still got to watch the guy because I do still find his stand up quite funny it's hilarious yeah yeah I, uh, I, yeah. I think he did confess that he said like I did it it's, it was wrong of me yeah and then I think it took like two years off like because I think it, their pub- <laughs> their, his publicist was like <laughs> get the fuck out of here yeah. like don't come to my office for two years I don't want to see your face <laughs> and then we come back with a new show or something you know because yeah. that's really hard to overcome you know mm. and I I would never condone this type of attitude I would never use my power um, to, you know, har- kind of harass. I don't know. Yeah. It, it's, it's an harassment. I don't know how you... Okay, we, I don't want to go into details of what happened because actually I was. I don't know. But yeah. uh, from what I heard, it's like, it's like you're using your power over women who like were fans of yours. Hmm. Like if I was in that position, I would be terribly hurt. And um, um, it, it's very hard for me to not like what he does anyways. Because I was not the person there, yeah. first, first of all, but also because the, the uh, I don't know, it, it's it's like, difficult. Yeah, it's so difficult. It's very yeah. difficult, and it's very intimate, and yeah. it's very like to each like to each his own in a way. The way you, how do you um, take that? And I can understand if people are like, "Fuck this guy! I don't want to have nothing to do with him. Mm. I don't want to even watch his show." But yeah. I think I would still like to have a laugh. If he makes me laugh, if not, fuck this, you know. Yeah, I mean, let's not end the podcast on that miserable note. Oh um, my god, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if Bill Cosby was doing a show, I would be fuck like, okay, no, <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. <laughs> but you know, for some people, it's the same. You know yeah. what I mean? For me, it's not the same. Hmm. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But yeah. So th- let's let's try and end it with uh, something fun. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I just did I just did stand up. Two times. And how did you find it? Did you? Like, um, I you loved it, and it was excruciating. It's yeah. like <gasps> you. It's it's horf. It's horrifying, but it's crazy when you make people laugh. And you actually like hear a bunch of people laugh all together. You're mm. just. It's like you're on a cloud. But I think you're already halfway there because you're you're already. As 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 a <laughs> performer, you're already on stage. You've already got the mic yes. in front of yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just putting funny together I yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> yeah yeah i think this is where also kind of where i got my confidence on stage as a singer mm. i think this is where you if you do it enough times and you're like okay this is this is me and yeah. I'm, I'm standing here with a microphone talking shit and then this is like being a professional kind of like uh louis ck when when i saw his like first stand-up shows i was amazed because you could see how everything is the everything is written down Nothing is like improvised, mm. but it feels like it is. It's so professional. Yeah. And sometimes there are like parts where it's like it's you could see that it's it's not in the text or whatever, like it's not written down, but it's still fucking great mm. because he's there in the moment and he's not scared. You know, he, he is scared, but he's using it. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
And I'm it, sure he's scared. It's like, like every band and a comedian, though, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's, they get tight, and you know when they're tight, they they just like yeah. they're knocking it out of the park. Yes. And it's just yeah. fucking amazing to watch. It's like just a sight to see because you do you look at it and you go, yeah. that guy is like at the top of his craft, or that person, that, that yeah. woman is top of their craft right now. Yes. And I'm, yeah. I'm getting to witness this. And it's just beautiful. Yeah. It's a beautiful art to me. Yeah. Let's finish on that. That's yes. that's, that's nice enough. <laughs> Seema, thank you so much thank for your you. time. Wow. Pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. We're not on tour. You like us, that's for sure. Thank you to Seema for having a chat with me. Not on tour's new album, Growing Pains, is available now in all good record shops, if that's still a thing. If not, I'm sure you can find it somewhere online. Please go rate and review this podcast on whatever streaming service you use. It really does help people find us, and those uh, those reviews uh, are really helpful to boost my ego. If you want to sponsor the podcast, then please do email us on punksandpubs at gmail.com. It's completely free, and you might find a new audience, or reach out to us on social media like a couple of you already have, and I will walk you through how you can sponsor the podcast right i'm out of here i need to go and record our christmas special if you go into a punk show and you see someone fall down you pick them right back up again until next time bye bye